Welcome to Archetypes. I'm Lee Woodruff, and I'm here with singer, songwriter, Median. And we are so happy to have you here. We love it when creative folks stop by and share your wisdom and your talent with us. Well, thanks for having me. The way that stars are made today is mm -hmm. so different than the old days where there was this very traditional channel of coming up through a record label. Right. How are you approaching your art today with this landscape? That's interesting. Um, I am an independent artist. I am not signed to a record company yet. Um, I have had offers uh, over the, like the past four or five years. Most people probably would have taken the offers that, that were presented to me. Um, it was contingent upon me changing my sound, my style, and really who I am. And because I really am not doing this to be um, a Lady Gaga or a Rihanna, um, I love both of them, I respect them completely, but I never wanted to be some big pop icon. And I felt like the offers that were presented to me were to become the next Fergie or to become the next this or that. And I never wanted to be the next anything. I always just wanted to stay consistent with who I am. A few of these offers were like pre-Adele's success. And if you read her story, you'll see that um, n not everyone thought she would make it. I mean, she really goes against everything American pop culture stands for. Yet her music is so profound and so uh, identifiable for most people. She was able to kind of break through what is traditionally acceptable in pop culture. So for me, I always wanted to just make music that was relevant to my life and um, could inspire other people. I can't really see myself, you know, dancing in a leotard on stage with I can. big production. Well, frankly, I can. <laughs> you can? Yeah. I, I just don't want to do that, you know? I, I want to maintain the simplicity of what I do, and it's not a big production. You mentioned Adele. Yeah. And you're right. She's a torch singer. She's not the, uh, you know, J-Lo, like, no. sex bomb. Right. And she's very private. Yeah. I love that about her, too. I love that she just shows up and you don't know anything. You've never seen a picture of her baby. Yeah. But do you have to, is that the exception to the rule? Do you have to sort of open your life up if you're going to achieve your dream? I don't think you have to. I think that we're conditioned to want to delve into people's lives and want to know as much as possible. And, and all of that is fine in due time, but I don't think that you have to make a production out of, you know, what did this person eat for breakfast? And I saw so-and-so coming out of Starbucks. I mean, who cares? You know, we're all human. Everyone goes to Starbucks. Tell us about some of your career highlights in the last few years. You're really on a roll. I'm kind of on a roll. Yeah. Um, so I relocated to Los Angeles in August. And um, we had uh, a placement with VH1 for a record called Bitter. We didn't know that the song would take off the way that it did, but according to VH1, they had never had such a reaction to an unsigned artist in the history of their network. And so for us, that was really cool because we didn't, we weren't ready. We, we didn't have an album ready to go. We just thought, okay, we'll license this song out and see what happens. Well, the next day we wake up and it's number eight on iTunes R&B Soul Charts next to Chris Brown and Usher, and we're just thinking like, wow, like how did this happen, you know? What did that feel like? It felt like a whirlwind of emotion. I mean, I was like happy, I was excited, um, I felt really thankful for this opportunity, because I knew that once this happened, this was gonna be the beginning of something great. Uh, I also felt scared, because it's like, oh my gosh, here we go. There's no turning back now, you know? Did it feel the way you thought it was going to feel? No. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, honestly. So where do you go from there? There's your song. It's number yeah. eight on the chart. Yeah. I've been working on some new material, and I'm excited about it. I'm working with some really awesome people, and I think this is going to be my best body of work yet. So That's exciting. Yeah. What would you tell the person coming up who's sort of 10 years behind you, who's dreaming big, Mm -hmm. who wants to have achieved what you've achieved in your trajectory right now. What advice do you have for that person? 
write songs that that mean something to you, um, and and do the music for yourself, and don't worry about opinions. Everybody's got a different opinion. The opinions of others weigh heavily on a new artist most of the time. But if you just stay true to what makes you unique, then I think that's the winning ticket. I love that. Well, I, for one, can't wait to hear you sing. So you. I think without further ado, let's welcome Medean. The song is called Gambling. <clears throat> One can. I see this picture clearer than it's ever been. So take your time, take your time to find something better. If you think you can, it's alright. Oh, I, I'll be fine. Oh, I, let me find someone whose heart is mine Have your way, gambling And I won't stay, you can play, play alone Foolish games, gambling And you can play, play your games, lose it all than anyone can You're searching all over for what you have in the palm of your hand So take your time Take your time to find something better I know you think you can It's alright Oh, I, I'll be fine. Oh, I, let me find someone whose heart is mine. Have your way, gambling, and you can play. what I'm worth. I know what I deserve and you'll regret the love you left behind. Have your way, gambling. I won't stay. You can play, play alone. Foolish games, gambling. And I won't stay. 